Hi, this is a tutorial series where I teach you how to make a puzzle game that uses the camera. This whole project is done using only vanilla JavaScript and HTML canvas. And a small part of it, this one here, is done using PHP and MySQL to save and load scores from the database. The game works on desktop computers, but also on mobile devices like phones and tablets. By following this series, you'll learn many useful things that you can later apply in other projects. We're pretty much done with the front-end part of the game, apart for some fine-tuning we'll do in the final lectures. But now, let's move to the back-end part and see how we can save the scores for others to see. Let's learn some MySQL. To store the scores, we will need to use some kind of database. I recommend going to the following link and downloading XAMPP. It comes with MySQL, and PHP MyAdmin, which is a nice user interface for managing database contents. XAMPP also includes the Apache server, which we will need to write the backend PHP code. After installing XAMPP, we go to the control panel and start these two services. Then we head on to the admin page. From here, we can open PHP MyAdmin and begin to construct our database to hold the scores. We create a new database by pressing the New button on the left, and we give our database a name. Now we need to create a table. Four columns are just fine, and let's call it Scores. Now, every MySQL table should have an ID field. We leave it as an integer type and mark it as a primary key. and tick this checkbox right here, so that it will auto-increment. This means that every time we'll add a new score, we don't have to worry about its ID anymore. It will automatically be decided by MySQL. Next, we'll need to store the name of the player here. It will be a string, so we'll use varchar as the data type, and put a maximum length of 255 characters here. Might be a bit too much, but never can know what names people come up with. Next, we'll store the time. It can be an integer because I plan to store the number of seconds. I can also add a comment here to clarify the format so I don't need to remember it later. And finally, let's store the difficulty level so that we can later group the scores based on that. Now we press save and we can see the table structure right here. Let's add some sample data to work with. It's going to be some fake placeholder data for now. We go to Insert and start entering values in every field. But as I said earlier, we don't need to worry about the ID. It will be automatically generated by MySQL. I'll just add my name here and let's say it took me 50 seconds to complete the puzzle on easy difficulty. Then I'll add Radu again, and 100 seconds while playing a medium. And again with 200 seconds on hard, and finally 4000 seconds on insane mode. So now it looks like I've played the game on all difficulty levels. Let's add a few more people here like John, with 20 seconds on easy and 1000 seconds on insane. Diana, with 100 seconds on hard and 400 seconds also on hard. Michael, with 400 seconds on medium. And Leo, with 10 seconds on medium. Now we press go and all these 10 entries were added into the table. We can click on the browse tab to inspect it. Now we can actually see here the SQL query that outputs this entire table. It says select everything from scores. We will later need to write similar queries in PHP to communicate between our front-end game and the database. This query right here could be useful to load the scores, for example, but it's not very nice as such. It mixes all difficulty levels and is not sorted in any way. 
hard to see who the winners are like this. So let's head on over to search and say that we want only those entries with easy difficulty. We can see how the SQL query here is updated as well. I think this PHP MyAdmin tool is very useful for learning SQL syntax. You can also practice writing the syntax by yourself by pressing on edit. Here we could, for example, add an order by clause so that the results are sorted by time. Now it's really easy to see that John is the winner when playing on easy mode. We can similarly obtain the results for the other difficulty levels. We just need to change the difficulty here each time. We'll use this query later in PHP to get the high scores. Now, to add a new result, we use the insert keyword. We specify the table name and the columns that will receive the data. And then the actual values that go into it. Note here that the name and difficulty are strings, so they need to be specified using quotes, otherwise you'll get an error. Then we press go and get feedback that one row was inserted. If we browse the table again, we'll see a new entry for Radu on insane difficulty. Have you ever used MySQL or something similar? I would really like to know what you have used and why. Let me know in the comments. Now we'll practice these queries using PHP. And because this is the first time I teach it, I will take it slow. I've moved all project files of the game built so far in the htdocs directory of XAMPP. Now I'll create an empty file called server.php. We next open this file in our text editor and in the browser. But note here the address is localhost slash puzzlecam slash server.php. You need to write it like that because then the PHP code is executed by the Apache server. I remind you that you need to have XAMPP installed and both Apache and MySQL running at this stage. Now, PHP code is quite different from JavaScript. The syntax starts and ends like this, and all the code goes in between. If you want to print something here, you use the keyword echo, followed by what you want to print. If you refresh the page, you get exactly that. Now I'll teach you how to connect the MySQL database we created earlier. Because it's also running locally on our computer, we'll use localhost as the host. The default user is root and the password is empty. Of course, if you're going to put this online somewhere, you'll want to add some better security, but I won't focus on that in this video. Then, to connect to the database, we use the MySQLI connect function and provided this information. If the link was not established, we warn that the connection failed. The die function terminates the PHP script as well. If the code passes the if statement, it will go here where we just echoed that connection was successful. I'll refresh and connection was successful. But if I specify a different host, PHP will produce some warning messages and the program terminates after this die statement. We also get an error message if we use the wrong user or password. Now, with a successful connection, we can move on and select the database like this. And we can use the OR keyword to call the die function in case of failure. If the code reaches here, it will output a success message. We can test and see that it was a success because the PuzzleCam database really exists. If we mess up here and use a different name, for example, the code will terminate with an error. 
Let's now define an SQL query as a simple string. I'll use the query we figured out earlier using PHP MyAdmin to select those entries from the scores table with easy difficulty. We can execute this query using the MySQLI query function. Now, this function doesn't actually return the result, but an object that we can use to iterate through the results. I'll show you. We first initialize an empty array. Then, if the result contains any rows, we will use a while loop to fetch each row one by one using the MySQLI fetch asoc function on the RS object. We add each row to the results array using the array push function and then print the array using the printr function like this. And we get an error. I forgot an i here. It should be MySQL i num rows. Now we have the array printed out here, but it's not sorted with respect to the score, or in this case, playing time. As we saw earlier, we can do that using the order by clause. I'll also format this query a bit better so it doesn't go outside the screen. Note that in PHP, the stop sign is used for concatenation, not the plus as in JavaScript and many other programming languages. Now, because we'll reuse this code to get results for other difficulty levels, it makes sense to write this as a function that returns the results array. We can then call it with easy as a parameter and get the same result. Let me just replace here the difficulty to use this argument and uh, almost forgot, need to specify the link here as well. Now we refresh and get the same result as previously but we can get other results as well by calling the function again. Let me quickly add the other difficulty levels as well. Now let's wrap all this into one function to get all the scores. We don't need these print statements anymore. We can just return an associative array with each of these results. Associative arrays are like JavaScript objects, where we can give names to the keys. Now we call this function and print the result like this. Or to be more familiar, you can use echo and convert this result array into a JSON string like this. It's great that PHP has support for all these without needing to install any libraries. I'll comment this out and focus on creating the other function we'll need to add the new score to the database. I'll pass the information as the first argument. For now, I'll write the query as a simple string with hard-coded values here and then replace each value one by one with the elements from the info. If you write your query like this, it's less likely to make mistakes. Otherwise, it's quite easy to mess up and forget the single quote or a double quote somewhere. Now we call MySQLI query again. If we don't succeed for some reason, we will return false. Otherwise, we return true to signify success. Now we can test the function like this by defining some info and calling the add score function using it. We can wrap it in an if statement like this to see if the insert was a success or not. And it claims to have worked. Let me now bring back this function call to get all the scores and see if it really worked. And it did. Great. That's it for today. Please like and share this video if you learned something useful. Next time, we'll link the database and the game using PHP. See you guys.